raise the Kimberley toad busters. The question is the House to now adjourn. I call the member for Greenway. Thank you, Speaker. Tonight I raise a pressing local matter being the current political agenda and direction of the Blacktown City Council, particularly those aspects which are being pushed by certain elements of the Liberal Party, motivated by ideology and un an unhealthy obsession with asset sales, meagre public services and neglect for those in our community who need it most. Blacktown Council is the most populous local government area in New South Wales, currently serving over 300,000 people according to the most recent census figures. And due to the massive growth we are seeing in Sydney's northwest, this is expected to increase to half a million people by 2020. With this size comes challenges for all levels of government. To Blacktown Council's credit, it has always met these challenges with an eye to the future in no small part due to its award-winning, highly skilled and dedicated staff. I want to place on record the very professional relationship I enjoy with Council, whereof I have had the opportunity to facilitate worthwhile partnerships with this federal Labor government, delivering Commonwealth investments in several important local projects over the past three years that otherwise would not have occurred, and working together to secure even more in future. Today, local government is responsible for far more than roads, rates and rubbish, a mantra which was reinforced in the recent inquiry I chaired into constitutional recognition of local government. It is crucial that local government continues to provide services and facilities such as childcare centres, libraries, parks, pools and other recreational facilities. This is one of the reasons I am such a passionate supporter of constitutional recognition. Indeed, Blacktown Council has provided these services in an efficient and excellent manner for decades. But in 2012, Blacktown City Council became controlled by an independent Liberal administration. And since then, we have seen certain sections of the Liberal Party in Blacktown pursue an agenda of privatisation and cuts with little, if any, public consultation. The community I represent is dependent on the facilities and services provided by local government in some areas more than others. Families rely on childcare services provided by council. Organisations rely on community infrastructure for meetings and social gatherings. Residents, young and old, rely on libraries and sporting facilities. But since the new Liberal administration came to power in Blacktown, we have witnessed some truly retrograde decisions. A cut in the pensioner rate rebate. Removal of the recognition of traditional landowners from council meetings, something that I introduced in 2004 when I was first elected to Blacktown Council. The closure of Mount Druitt's swimming pool without any public consultation. And we know more is afoot in relation to other aquatic centres, with deliberations on the report, the function and strategic direction of council's aquatic and leisure centres continuing. An investigation into the potential sale of small parks and reserves, voting down a motion proposed by Labor councillors to save residents' homes from potential compulsory acquisition, as drafted in the proposed 2013 Blacktown Local Environment Plan, or BLEP, flagged the sale of council-operated childcare centres and a resolution to investigate the renaming of Blacktown City. One of the most distressing of these items is the proposed 2013 BLEP, which includes the possibility of residents' homes being rezoned and acquired to expand larger parks, such as International Peace Park in Seven Hills in my electorate. Astonish astonishingly, that means that there is currently a proposal to enable the acquisition of people's homes in order to increase the size of existing parks, while also looking at the sale of other parks. I've been contacted by scores of local residents over the past few months, including Daryl and Kim Green of Seven Hills, two of the many thoroughly decent people whom I've come to know as a result of this matter, and for whom the BLEP is occupying an inordinate amount of time and energy precisely because it's about their homes, the life they've made in Blacktown, their future, residents who are gravely concerned about the BLEP and rightfully so. Residents know that while the BLEP issue is a proposal, one of their primary concerns is the uncertainty of waiting a couple of years or even a couple of decades before knowing whether council will elect to compulsorily acquire their properties. This is an unsustainable position in which to place people who have established their homes, many of whom are approaching retirement and, as a practical matter, can't envisage being granted and servicing a new mortgage to purchase another property if their existing home is acquired by a future council. 
I, along with my colleague, the member for Chifley, and state members for Blacktown and Chingabi, John Robertson and Nathan Rees, stand with our Labor colleagues on Blacktown Council, who are fighting these proposals and the ideological ruthlessness of some elements of the Liberal Party. It's time the administration recognises the negative impact their actions are having on the well-being of its residents, abandon its reckless pursuit of an ideological, ideological agenda and refocus on the people.